<laughs> Does everybody have some sugar? Does everybody have some nuts and cheese and sugar? <laughs> so anyway, I want to welcome you all today to our open and affirming celebration. Um, back at our annual meeting, we took the vote to be an open and affirming church. Um, and it's important for people to know where there is safe space. And when people walk by our church, they see signs and symbols that indicate that this is a safe space. And so we want to celebrate that. So there should be nuts and sugar and drinks, because we want to celebrate that we are an open and affirming church. So we welcome you to this open and affirming uh, uh, order of service that is quick and brief. Um, thank you for coming. Our visitors that just came in, thank you also for coming. Thank you. Our allies, everybody, just thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. So we've selected a movement of uh, the Hollywood Sonata for violin and viola by Michael Hyden. Michael Hyden was the younger brother of his more famous brother, Joseph. There's also a story involving Mozart with this, these pieces, but they're only of interest to uh, string musicians.
wonderful music performance. And the next person will share a short uh, reflection about congregations through the whole open forming process. It's Mina who has welcome her to share her reflection. But very personally, 
What impressive thing was our band in the century. It was a great from fishers of men and women to fishers of people. As we know, changes are starting with one silly trivial expression like this. Because sometimes certain people are excluded by using very familiar expression within me or within me. In addition, we need to proclaim our persuasion officially. As such, we amended the open and affirming statement that we will see together and translated it into Korean and Mandarin versions during Asian American Heritage Month so that we can get to share what we value with other communities. In this process, I have seen how we can practice change and transformation step by step, even from a single word, single English word, to our significant statement. And in this process, I have learned how one congregation can conceive a beautiful vision and develop it together. Not only me, but also all of us have witnessed every moment. And finally, we proclaim and celebrate it. We are open to each other. We affirm each other. And I believe this is a love that we need and we need to develop. Sometimes we need to create in our time. There is another old saying I like. There's no fear, but perfect love has our fear. We love because God first loved us. Many thanks to United Church of Hyde Park. I also learned about love in this church, in this community, in this congregation, what is our love in our time, and how to love. And now, we will continue to nurture this love, to stay with our LGBTQ plus folks, our neighbor, and our family, and to build a community in which no one is not disregarded or excluded. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mina, for your uh, reflections. And I'm Wei Ren Chen, uh, a member of the church. Uh, we received two notes from our friends who participate in our journey, but they cannot make it today, but they sent us the notes. So I can read the notes from them. The first note is from Miles Martin, who participate in our, one of our events, share their story. Miles is also one of the co-producers of the documentary on Netflix, Pray Away. The following is for Miles. To United Church of Hyde Park, greetings to you from Los Angeles. While I am not able to be in Chicago with you or in person, I join you in spirit as you celebrate the formal decision to become an LGBTQ plus open affirming congregation. As you may know, despite the tremendous progress the LGBTQ plus movement has made over the last several decades. It is still all too common for countless LGBTQ plus people growing up in Christian communities to believe that it isn't possible for them to fully integrate their faith and sexuality or their faith and gender identity. 
In most cases, this problem is not the result of messages they have received from God or even from Scripture. It is because of messages they have received from other Christians and specifically from Christians within the churches that they have looked to as their primary spiritual home and community. Sometimes these negative messages are pointed and direct, but more frequently they are passive and indirect and come as a result of silence. I say all of this because I believe the decision to become an open and friendly Christian community and the various practices of allyship and solidarity that come with the Dissonation still mean as much today as they did 30 years ago when the, when the Open and Burning Movement began. Every congregation that partly share their story of becoming Open and Burning leads their congregations to be able to image the same is possible for themselves. As more and more churches pursue this process, more and more LGBTQ plus people are able to imagine themselves as not only beloved by God, but as truly made in God's image and therefore invited to participate in and contribute to the full life of the church. We become healthy, happier, and more whole people. We become a healthier, happier, and more whole church. Our decision does not only impact LGBTQ plus living in Chicago, it impacts LGBTQ throughout the United States and LGBTQ plus people around the world. Thank you for saying yes to God and thank you for saying yes to us. And because it is June, I will be remiss if I didn't remind you of this. Pride is not the absence of humanity. Pride is the absence of shame. Be proud, be loud, and let your light shine. Peace and grace. Miles Martin. The second note is from our old friend, Fred Schneider. Mm -hmm. Greetings and congratulations to the member of the United Church of Hyde Park in celebrations of your decision to becoming an open and affirming, welcoming and more light church. I was actually surprised that you had not done this many years ago when other churches were wrestling with decisions surrounding the tremendous the treatment of LGBTQ plus people. But as they say, better late than never. I'm happy that I was able to be a part of your decision-making process, and in this in this course of it, I was able to reconnect with many of people I knew and admired from so long ago. Love to all of you, and I hope you move forward much as we did many years ago when I was a member of the United Church of Hyde Park. Love and peace, Frank Schneider. Oh. Now, welcome uh, David to come forward to uh, continue our uh, celebration. So, I've, I've been asked to lead us in a reading of the open and affirming statement. And it's, as you know, very long. <laughs> yes. Um, so if you have a copy and you want to read it uh, along with me, please do. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, I'm just going to just going to read it. Are you reading the back? Too? I, so I think you want me to read the entire statement, right? Yeah. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. So the statement is very long, but I'm going to just uh, read it. Uh, and then I've been asked to do a celebratory toast. So I will follow the statement with, with a toast. Um, 
So I'll begin now. Our congregation became as like the disciples of Christ. Therefore, we declare this statement. Our congregation welcomes, celebrates, and affirms diversity. We are persons of different ages, education, races, ethnicities, abilities, economic circumstances, and nationalities. We believe the time has come to join other congregations responding to the call of the 15th General Synod of the United Church of Christ to be open and affirming to all people, including those who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer. We also recognize and endorse the statement of more light Presbyterians, which is following the risen Christ and seeking to make the church a true community of hospitality. The mission of more light Presbyterians is to work for the full participation of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer LGBTQ people in the life, ministry, and witness of the Presbyterian Church USA and in society. We also recognize and endorse the statement of Reconciling Ministries Network, which is, we celebrate God's gift of diversity and value of wholeness made possible in community equally shared and shepherded by all. We welcome and affirm people of every gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation who are also of every age, race, ethnicity, physical and mental ability, level of education, and family structure, and of every economic, immigration, marital, and social status, and so much more. We acknowledge that we live in a world of profound social, economic, and political inequities. As followers of Jesus, we commit ourselves to the pursuit of justice and we pledge to stand in solidarity with all who are marginalized and oppressed. We acknowledge that lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people have often been scorned and devalued as persons and discriminated against, both in society at large and by many denominations and congregations. And therefore, we affirm the following. We believe that lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people share with all others the work that comes from being children of God. We welcome the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people to join our congregation and to participate fully in the life, liturgy, spirituality, employment, and leadership of our congregation. We acknowledge the existence of ignorance, fear, and hated hatred predicated on differences in sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression, not only in our culture, but also within our denominations and many of our congregations. And we therefore covenant not to discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation, but at the same time, we seek to include, welcome, and support those whose personal or religious convictions differ from these views on sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. We seek to address the needs and advocate the concerns of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people in our congregation, in our denominations, and in our society, and would actively encourage our three denominations 
both nationally and in all their various instrumentalities, to adopt policies consistent with this statement and be joined together as a covenantal community to celebrate and share in the assurance that we are worthy recipients of the love and grace of God. That is a mouthful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now I have a toast. I want to propose a toast. And I didn't bring anything to toast it. So I hope that you guys have let's something to make toast. Make sure everybody has liquid. Yeah. Everybody, let's, let's make sure everybody has liquid. Yes. Uh, is there any, is there any uh, seltzer water? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. You're already. <laughs> so, I want to propose a toast to all those who invested so much of their hearts and minds into this process of helping us get to this stage of becoming an open and affirming congregation. That includes members of our open and affirming team who really worked hard uh, on this, as well as members of the congregation who began this process over 20 years ago, and friends of the congregation. So I, I know we started this you know, back in the 1990s, and so we're finally here. I also want to toast to our commitment as a congregation to live into the spirit of the open and affirming statement that we just read together. As Jesus showed us by example what it means to be truly open and affirming, we recognize our celebration today not as an end point, but as a commitment to an ongoing journey. Toast. but many thanks to Wei Jin for leading us through this process. Thank you. We are an ONA church, or whatever you want to call us. We're inclusive, and anybody can come any kind of way. You can bring all of yourself to this space. Um, that's it. <laughs>